The history of bluegrass music is filled with an assortment of musical partners who shaped the direction of the genre. Charlie and Bill Monroe, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, and John Duffy and Charlie Waller, among many others. Each duo contributed to the richness and diversity of bluegrass music, and each ironically had separate careers before and after their partnerships. One of the more significant but less internationally acclaimed duos was Don Reno and Red Smiley. Don Reno and Red Smiley were two of the most iconic and influential figures in bluegrass music. Their collaboration, which began in 1949 and lasted until Smiley died in 1972, produced some of the most memorable and enduring bluegrass hits of all time. Don Reno is remembered for his energetic performances, songwriting talent, and the ability to hold an audience's attention. He was relentless in his dedication to recording and touring. Red Smiley played on country radio and appeared with major country stars on tour and on his television shows. Smiley performed with acoustic instruments within the bluegrass genre while also enjoying mainstream country music. He was a mild-mannered gentleman and well-respected by audiences and fellow artists. Donald Wesley Reno was born February 21, 1926, in Buffalo, South Carolina. He grew up just across the border in Clyde, North Carolina. Unlike many bluegrass artists, Reno didn't grow up in a musically talented family. His introduction to music came from a different source. His older brother, Harley's brother-in-law, had a band. Being around the band, Reno met fiddlers Art Wooten and Tommy Magnus. He first began playing the banjo at age five on an instrument he made. The first song he learned to play was Brown's Fairy Blues. Reno also owned a guitar by age eight and learned to play. Don's banjo picking style was influenced by Snuffy Jenkins. Reno is known for his unique two finger single string style, which involves using his index or middle finger in conjunction with his thumb to pick a single string repeatedly. This technique allows him to play scales and complex fiddle tunes with precision. During Don's early career, he was primarily a three-finger picker, but developed his unique two-finger style partially in response to comparisons that were being made between him and his friend Earl Scruggs. Don wanted a style that would set him apart. However, the Reno style goes beyond single string picking and includes techniques such as double stops, double time picking, and triple pull-offs. All of these and other techniques make Reno's playing recognizable. As a preteen, he performed on the radio, playing guitar and harmonica. Around this time, he joined the Morris Brothers as a banjo player. Ironically, in 1942, he was replaced by another up-and-coming banjo player named Earl Scruggs. Don went on to play with Arthur Smith and his Cracker Jacks, where he played several instruments and performed comedy. In 1943, Bill Monroe invited him to join the Bluegrass Boys. However, he chose to join the Army instead. He went to basic training in 1944 and then on to cavalry school to learn how to be a horse soldier. During the war, he served with Merrill's Marauders in Burma and China, where he was wounded in combat. After returning from the war, Don ran a small grocery store in South Carolina and played country music and jazz at local clubs. In 1948, he heard Earl Scruggs had left the Bluegrass Boys, so he made the journey to Nashville to audition. Unfortunately, the Bluegrass Boys were on the road performing in North Carolina, so Don came back to Taylorsville, North Carolina, where he uncased his banjo, walked up onto the stage, and played with the band. Bill Monroe, who had offered Don a job in 1943, said, Where have you been? I've been looking for you. Bill asked Don to join the Bluegrass Boys, replacing Earl Scruggs, who ironically had previously replaced Don in the Morris Brothers Band. Don remained with the Bluegrass Boys until July 1949, performing with some of the most talented members of the band, including Lester Flatt, Chubby Wise, Jackie Phelps, Benny Martin, Joel Price, and Mac Wiseman. In addition to his musical abilities, Don also excelled at sports and played third baseman and left fielder for Monroe's baseball team. 
showcasing his versatility and skills in multiple areas. Reno had contracted malaria while serving in Southeast Asia during the war, and in 1949 he had a recurrence of the illness which left him in a weakened state. As a result, he left the Bluegrass Boys and returned to South Carolina. After he had recovered his strength, he formed a band with his nephew, Verlin Reno. In the same year, he received a call to join Tommy Magnus and the Tennessee Buddies in Roanoke, Virginia. Arthur Lee Red Smiley was born May 17, 1925, in Asheville, North Carolina. His father was a school administrator and fiddle player. The red-haired Smiley's love for music can be traced back to a friend of his father, Bascom Lamar Lunsford, who was a music scholar and performer. Lunsford played a style of music native to western North Carolina that featured a rhythmic upstroke on the strings, similar to callhammer banjo playing, but with an emphasis on the downstroke. According to historian Barry Willis, Red was inspired to pursue music at the age of seven when he saw two hobos playing in Bushville, North Carolina. This event is mentioned in Willis's book, America's Music, Bluegrass. During his teenage years, Red played guitar and sang with Bryson City, North Carolina residents Harry and Harley Smokey Talent and Lewis Sherrill in a band called Smokey and the Carolina Ramblers. By the late 1930s, he was performing on WROL in Knoxville. Smiley served in the Army during World War II. After discharge, he decided to attend Diesel Mechanic School in Nashville. And while there, he saw, but didn't meet, Don Reno for the first time. Reno was performing with Bill Monroe at the Grand Ole Opry. He must have been impressed because years later, he suggested Reno for the job with the Tennessee Buddies in Roanoke. In addition to his work on WROL, Red also performed in East Tennessee and Western North Carolina with notable musicians such as Zeke Morris, Red Rector, Fred Smith, and the Saucman Brothers. Red Smiley joined Tommy Magnus and his band at WDBJ Radio in Roanoke, Virginia in 1949. When he heard that Don Reno had left the Bluegrass Boys, he suggested to Magnus that they bring him to Roanoke to play in their band. And that's when Reno met Smiley. Reno wrote four songs that the group recorded for the Federal label, a subsidiary of King Records from Cincinnati. After Tommy Magnus retired, Reno and Smiley moved to Wheeling, West Virginia to play with Toby Stroud's Blue Mountain Boys. It was a short-term job, as soon they were approached by Sid Nathan of King Records to record the duo alone. They went to Cincinnati in 1952 for a recording session, which included I'm Using My Bible for a Roadmap. After the recording session, the two returned to their homes and pursued separate careers. Red worked as a mechanic for the state of North Carolina, and Don played with Arthur Guitar Boogie Smith and the Cracker Jacks in Charlotte. Fortunately, the King Records began to sell, and the duo was approached by a producer in Richmond who wanted to produce a live show with Don and Red. During an April weekend in 1955, they extracted their bass player and fiddle player from jobs they had in a South Carolina cotton mill and went to Richmond. This was the first time Don Reno, Red Smiley, John Palmer, and Mac McGahey shared the stage together. The night before the live show, they played the Old Dominion Barn Dance radio show. The producers of the Barn Dance were so impressed they offered the group $80 per show. They accepted the offer and the Tennessee cut-ups were born. In 1955, Reno briefly reunited with Arthur Smith to record the classic instrumental Feuding Banjos, which was later retitled Dueling Banjos for its unauthorized use in the 1972 film Deliverance. Carlton Haney became their manager in December 1955. They had a very successful touring career, breaking box office records wherever they appeared. They were very prolific, releasing a new single every six weeks. Reno had a reputation for being able to write as many as 15 new songs in one session. 
The radio and television shows created a demand for their touring schedule. Simultaneously, they were doing a daily early morning show, Top of the Morning with longtime host Irving Sharp in Roanoke, a radio barn dance in Danville, and a weekly TV show in Harrisonburg. Their television shows and live appearances were very entertaining. Not only did they do standard bluegrass hits, but would often perform high-energy showcases of more contemporary country music. Don would even write elaborate comedy sketches where the whole band would dress up in costumes and perform. Their characters included Chicken and Pansy Hot Rod, Jeff Dooley Tater, and Mutt High Pockets. As Eddie Stubbs stated in his liner notes to Don Reno and Red Smiley on the air, Reno and Smiley's ability to entertain was noted on one occasion while appearing at the Terrace Ballroom in Newark, New Jersey. Don and Red were the opening act for Ray Price. Following their show, Reno and Smiley were showered with an amazing five encores. Subsequently, both Ray Price and Jim Reeves included in their performance contracts a clause stating that they would not follow Reno and Smiley on stage. Their first recording session in 1956 yielded such classics as Country Boy Rock and Roll, No Longer a Sweetheart of Mine, and their most popular composition, I Know You're Married, But I Love You Still. During a nine-year period with King Records, they produced many influential songs, including Don't Let Your Sweet Love Die and Please Remember That I Love You. Red Smiley's health was an impediment to much of their touring. He was weakened by war injuries and diabetes. He lost 100 pounds between 1955 and 1965 due to his condition. After fiddler Mac McGahey left to join Porter Wagner in 1964, the duo amicably decided to end their act together. Later, Red would say, With all honesty, Don and I never had a crossword. After the parting, Don Reno kept the band name, Tennessee Cutups, and his son, mandolin player Ronnie Reno, who had joined the band at the age of eight. Red Smiley got the bass player, John Palmer, the Roanoke TV show, and the tour bus. Smiley selected talented musicians for his new band, the Bluegrass Cutups, and they performed on the WWVA Jamboree in Wheeling, West Virginia, and recorded five albums for Rim Rock and Rural Rhythm, many of which have since been reissued on CD. When the Top of the Morning show was canceled in 1968, Red retired and the band continued as the Shenandoah Cutups. That year, Smiley recorded 10 tracks with electric country backing for major records, but despite the quality of the music and some airplay for Best Female Actress of the Year, a career in country music was not in the cards for Red. After several years of retirement, Red became bored at home and decided to hit the road with Don Reno and his partner Bill Harrell and tour with them for a while. However, things took a turn in 1971 when he started having mild heart attacks and then fell seriously ill with the flu later that year. He passed away on January 2, 1972 at the age of only 47 and was laid to rest at the DeHart Cemetery in Bryson City, North Carolina. In September 1965, Don Reno and his reassembled Tennessee Cutups performed at the first multi-day bluegrass festival at Cantrell's Horse Farm in Fincastle, Virginia. The festival was produced by their longtime manager, Carlton Haney. During the event, Don announced a short-lived collaboration with fiddler Benny Martin, which launched the country chart hit, A Soldier's Prayer in Vietnam. In the early 1970s, Reno and Harold released a series of albums with various record labels, such as Monument, Dot, and CMH. Smiley occasionally collaborated with them on these recordings and even made his final live performance shortly before he passed away. After Reno and Harold parted ways in the fall of 1976, Reno moved to Lynchburg, Virginia and began performing with his sons Don, Wayne, Dale, and Ronnie. In 1979, he reunited with Arthur Smith to record the album Arthur Smith and Don Reno Feuding Again. Don Reno's career came to an early end when he passed away at the age of only 58 in Charlottesville. His cause of death was listed as a circulatory ailment. 
He was interred at Spring Hill Cemetery in Lynchburg, Virginia. His sons continued to reign as the Reno brothers. Both Reno and Smiley were posthumously inducted into the Bluegrass Hall of Fame in 1992. Don Reno and Red Smiley were incredibly talented musicians whose lives and careers were both cut short. Not surprisingly, both had chosen to serve their country during World War II, and the injuries and diseases they acquired during their service appear to be a factor in their early deaths. They were truly part of our greatest generation, who sacrificed so much for the good of their country.